you could notice how close the clearance is when I close it. Somebody get an ambulance. Ladies and gentlemen, so I'm sitting in the Ford GT and this is your line of visibility from the driver's seat. Yes, yeah, so you literally have this much space in order to look out. It's not as upright as any other normal car. This is a very, very low car. Yeah, space is definitely very limited as you can see as I am sitting in the car and if I try to open the door, you could notice how close the clearance is when I close it. It's a close fit. I almost chopped the top of my head off. But thankfully I have no hair up here, so that's a good thing. Other than that though, this car is pretty much the same as any other Ford GT. You only were offered four options from the factory. And you can see from right here, you have the Macintosh radio, which for audiophiles, this is the highest end of home theater offerings. And Ford was able to offer it. And you could tell that this radio is very well hidden. It's not very driver friendly. This is more so for the passenger that would sit here. But you have this huge subwoofer right in the middle. So you have a lot of bass coming from the middle, but you also have a beautiful view of the engine right behind you. And you could see the supercharger sitting right behind you. Ford GT is definitely that car. This is, as I have said before, the greatest American car that's ever been made. I really say that because if you compare it to anything else, yeah, you have the Cobra down in the distance, which is iconic. But in terms of usability, I think this car Yep, this is definitely it. This is definitely the most usable iconic car that you could possibly get. Nothing even comes close. The greatest American sports car. Even the best American sports car isn't always practical. Entry and exit is not always easy. When you stand 6'5", even the best American sports cars will present its unique challenges. I reach underneath and watch the door open and there's so much space that is occupied, so you have to be extra careful when getting into the car. You could literally stand straight up, but you have to make sure that you don't guillotine your head when you close the door, because that would make for a terrible nightmare. Getting into the car isn't always easy, but man, the seats are shockingly comfortable, like my Mercedes sedan comfortable. To say the least, I was pleasantly surprised. So I'm sitting inside this Ford GT and these little grommets these plastic grommets i thought that you would feel them when you sit in the car but you actually do not feel the grommets at all it's actually a really comfortable seat and i am thoroughly surprised at how comfortable the grommets the seats are in general the grommets do not interfere with comfort level at all whatsoever oh and you have this also how can i forget the ac controls because there is no space on the dash for any of the functions over here, you have the lights, you have the fog, you have the dimmer, you have the rear defrost, you have the hazards. Yep. But here in the center, because there's no space in the dash for anything else, the AC controls are located right here. So you would have your cold climate, your hot climate, AC on, recycle the air. We're gonna redirect the air to the feet, chest and feet, only the chest. And of course, your defrost options for the front. If you needed the defrost option for the rear, it's going to be located over here. Everything is really easy to use because there's not much for you to use in the first place. This is a very small cockpit. It is a very driver focused car. And in order for you to get the most out of the driving, you need to be focused solely on the driving experience and nothing else. There were only a total of four equipment options. 
So the other three options in this car, aside from the high-end radio option, is the Stripe Delete, the brakes, and the caliper colors. And this car has three of those four options. You only were able to get four options from the factory. It's, do I want a Stripe or not? Do I want the high-end radio, which this car has? Do I want the silver painted calipers? Yes, no, maybe I want the red calipers. And do I want the BBS wheels with the iconic design that is offered on this car? Actually, this car has that option. This car is a very exclusive vehicle. This is unlike any other car. This is only one of seven with the stripe delete from the factory. And this color is called Midnight Blue Metallic. Now, I have an affinity for this color because I love dark blue cars, as my 911 is a dark blue car. So when I saw this car here at Autosport Designs here at Huntington Station, I knew that I had to come see it in person because I knew that it's not going to last on their dealership lot for that long. But it's worth checking out because this is a fantastic car with all the right features. It's only got 7,000 miles. This car is absolutely gorgeous. Definitely worth checking out. I'm going to take additional pictures of this vehicle without me sitting in it so you can get a full detailed view of all the intricacies that this car has to offer. Getting out of the Ford GT is always a source of humor for many of my viewers. So here is me getting out of this car in minimal space. I think I can stand straight up. The Ford GT is loaded with so many details, so here's some additional details. Have to open it from the center. Too. Yeah. Battery, of course. <laughs> Disconnecting the battery tender because we're gonna hear what this car sounds like during a startup. And of course, you have all your vital fluids in order to operate the car. Normally, all covered with a nice little pocket. That you can of course. Maybe a weekend bag in if you want. Yeah. <laughs> but here we are. I'm going to stand in the line of sight for Justin starting the car. I got you over here. Thank you. Great car. Very difficult to get into. Yep, exactly. <laughs> the 100 for the 100 years that Ford has been in existence. Ford versus Ferrari. I will take the Ford. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's such yeah. an easy, easy car to drive. Exactly. I mean, it's like you wouldn't think that you were in a car that handled like this, looked like this, had this much power. Really, really nice. And I think it's also the use of a powertrain that is found on multiple on multiple Fords, where it's out of the parts bin and, and that is familiar. You have to service it? Yeah. It's not like servicing the uh, F40 over here. Exactly. <laughs> this is waiting on parts from Italy. No, it's all good. It's all done. Yeah, it's, uh, but actually, this is finally done. Yeah, it's finally done. It's actually beautiful because we got to test drive it. Like it's been driven about 200 miles since we rebuilt the engine. Yeah. And now we got to get on it with some boost and some highway cruising. But, yeah. Uh, still a little cold. Maybe maybe tomorrow. It'll exactly. Be like in the mid 40s, so maybe we'll get it out yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's all dependent on temperature. So yeah. anytime we're driving any of these cars. There's so many contingent factors you have to consider. You have to consider the tire temperature, the engine temperature, and getting it up to speed in order for it to operate at a very, at a very good, um, at a very good pace. So, all of this just is livable. It's usable. You could actually daily drive this. You can. Yeah. With the exception of tight parking spaces. Exactly. <laughs> because if you have to open the doors with this, there's no way that a normal person of a normal size or a normal stature person like myself will never get into this car. It's definitely impossible. Now, some of you may be asking why I'm not driving this car. Well, in New York City, it had been 
snowing. So there is a considerable amount of snow that is on the ground still in certain locations, as you can see in the distance. There is also a considerable amount of salt and salt will do detrimental things to a chassis or a car of this value. So I will not be driving this Ford GT today, but I did want to give you a walk around of one of the greatest cars that has ever been made. This is a car that just, you see it from a distance and this is a beautiful car right here, this Aston Martin Laganda, which a car like that will take away my attention from something like this. But <laughs> this is one of the iconic cars, if not, like I said, one of the greatest cars that's ever been produced from an American manufacturer. And I know the Viper guys and the Corvette guys are gonna fight me on this, but this is definitely a lot better. This is a car that took Ferrari and it made him check himself back in the 1960s during the Le Mans races. But this is a tribute to that car. This is not an actual race car. This is a tribute car that has lasted the test of time. Because if you look at the other tribute cars that were produced in era, such as the Ford Thunderbird, which I think was a terrible car. It just looked really cool. And Oprah probably gave out a bunch of them on her show, but it was not the car. This is what Oprah should have been giving out because this is the car that was the true test of time. The Volkswagen Beetle, the new Beetle, in my opinion, was a failure. This is the car that is a true performer. It drives right, it looks right, and Camilo Pardo, the designer of this car, did an amazing job. He absolutely knocked it out of the park. Definitely one of the best. If you had the choice between two iconic vehicles that I have for you today, the Ford GT or the Ferrari F40. Now, I know that's a very ridiculous question. Obviously, you would probably take the F40 but I can't assume that. You need to leave it in the comments below. What would you take? Would you take the iconic Ford GT? Because this is a car in its own right that is very, very powerful and important to the American automotive lexicon. And the F40, the final car made by the great Enzo Ferrari. What is your choice? Is it this car? Or is it this one? Leave it in the comments below. That is the final question for you today. Take care, guys.